Who would you think mostly buys this rifle? I can think of two groups. And they might be one and the same, I'm not sure. But first, I'd say folks who can really appreciate an heirloom quality rifle. Very few shortcuts, if any, are made in its construction. Kind of like the real walnut stock that is checkered, precisely. Beautiful bluing, hammer forged barrel, billet machined receiver in the latest model. Kind of like that. There are people that really appreciate that old classic quality. I'm one of them, by the way. Second group, guys and gals who can really appreciate a very accurate rifle. And when I say accurate, I'm talking one MOA, at least out to 100 yards where we tested it, and that is impressive for a 22 long rifle. Yeah. You are, of course, watching the Nut and Fancy Project, and I'm not all about tactical. Not always. In fact, I have many reviews out there on decidedly non-tactical stuff. This is going to be another one. It's time to do a 22 rifle review. It is summer 2013 when I'm finally knocking this one out. And again, we see that we have a long-term gun test. This has been in the project for coming up on three years. <clears throat> the thing you get out of it is a huge amount of data. Yeah, unlike any other media source in the world, when this happens, uh, the planets align. You're talking a lot of rounds fired. It's a long-term test, and I bring the data to the table. Here we go. Feature length, perhaps. I don't know. I'd really love it if we could do it in 20 minutes, but something tells me that ain't going to happen. And I'm going to start the review off with uh, something I just talked about. We talked about heirloom quality. We'll hit that again hard several times through the review. I'll show you in close detail exactly what I'm talking about by this beautiful, by the way, CZ452 American. And their video will also serve for the 455 American, which came on scene, I think, around 2010 to replace this rifle. Now, last time I checked, this one, the 452 American, available only in 22 long rifle, is still being sold in the left-handed version. If we jump into, this is a 12 CZ catalog. You'll see what, exactly what I'm talking about. There's a 452 left hand. I still think they're out there for now. Uh, but the 455 has superseded it, and they're very similar in their construction. There are some improvements made in the 455 American. One is caliber interchangeability, and you can actually buy a combo, which is a 22 long rifle and 17 HMR barrel set, and I would recommend that, by the way. And you can get, of course, just uh, any caliber you want in the 452 American, 22 long rifle, 22 WMR, 17 again and then buy barrels later on if and when you need them. That is an improvement on the 455 over this rifle, but there's a lot of, a lot of similarities. Uh, CZ will tell you they've improved their manufacturing process and the 455 is going to be smoother than this rifle, the caliber interchangeability notwithstanding. So we'll talk about that too in ergonomics, but like I said, introduction complete now. Let's go back to that one point I said, accuracy. I'll take you back to last year, this was uh, April 2012, and I shot all types of loads out of this one, and I have lots of targets to show you, I hope you like them. Here comes a Gila Super Extra 40 grain subsonic at 25 yards. That's 25 yards handheld off the bench, uh, just writing a note to myself so I can remember. Sniper subsonic, 60 grain, not overly impressive with that. And then five rounds Ely Prime. That's pretty sweet. That shoots really good though, that Ely Prime. Oh my gosh. It, it should though, it's a match ammo. Aguila ASE, that sniper, whatever that is, I forget to be honest with you. Five rounds Aguila Sniper Sonic, super, I can't speak, Sniper Subsonic Ely Prime. Look at that, freaking one hole. Five rounds, oh my gosh, so many targets to show you. Yeah, we shot it further than 25 yards. It's coming. Aguila Sniper Subsonic. By the way, the reason I test this is I think when we start talking about POUs here in a minute, it will play. Uh, I'm talking like pest control. And you don't live in a suppressor legal state. You don't want to buy a suppressor, which is a lot of money usually, and it's a lot of paperwork and a lot of delay. Taking, last time I checked, around 10 to 12 months for you to get your authorization to have that. So why don't you just run a Sniper Subsonic and it sounds like a pellet gun. Problem solved. Look at that. 
Aguila Sniper Subsonic. What a great round that is. I've talked about it before in some previous reviews like the Savage Mark II. Federal Bulk. Another one right there. Let me say at this point, this is not the only accurate 22 bolt action out there. I've reviewed two others at this point that are just off the top of my head. The Marlin 925 XT22 and also the Savage Mark II series. I hit rather hard. Also long-term tests. Both outstanding. And although I love the CZ452, my love for those other rifles is not diminished. So I just want to throw that out there on the table, keeping it real. 25 yards, CCI. I love CCI. So consistent, so fast. This is off a of Wiggly Rest. We're going all the way back to 2011 for this. Uh, that was basically a one hole, and then I ripped it. Nice. Nice. Now, there's a lot of 22s that will shoot this good. We know that. We know that, no problem. Uh, some of these are shot by my son, Tactical Duel, as you can tell. This is CCI, still 25 yards for now. Great group. Oh my gosh. We're just so extremely happy with the 452. And for that matter, the 455, it's, they're going to shoot about the same. This is coming out of a 20.5 inch barrel that has been lapped, and it's also cold hammer forged, like I said at the intro. That's a sweet barrel. And CZ will tell you, you don't have to break this one in because it's hand lapped. How Getting back to that heirloom quality, how many barrels do you know that are hand lapped? It's got a target crown on it as well. That's impressive to me personally. Another great group right there. Moving along. And then we took it out in the desert, sometimes a very windy desert at 100 yards, and this is what we got. This is shooting CCI, I think we're all the way back in December 11 for this group. 10 round group at 100 yards with a 22. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty stoked with that with the wind we had. There you go, some more groups. Good group there, one that opened it up. That's a great group. That's another 10 round group out of the CZ452. I shot these ones. I think Tactical Doodle, my son, took the, the banner for the day kind of like this. This is what I'm talking about. This is a C CCI mini mag, solids, 40 grain solids I believe, tactical doodle, freaking four shot group. That's sub MOA, or right around MOA, six rounds, six rounds there. Now occasionally some guys really devote themselves to small bore accurate shooting and they can shoot really, really good groups at 100 yards. But what I'm reviewing this for is for the average shooter, the recreational shooter, where maybe you don't go out that often doing it. And if you do, you just pick what kind of ever ammo you have, which that day was CCI, and you'll know you'll still get a great group out of it. If you used Ely Prime, you, one MOA. Yeah, even at 100. As long as your wind's not doing something crazy. If your wind's doing something crazy out in the desert, or wherever you're shooting with a 22 long rifle, your groups will open up. Speaking from lots of experience. Oh, that's what ASC was. Aguila Super Extra Subsonics. This is a uh, May of 2012. Five rounds. Nice group there. Another five round group. Just amazing. Just 25 yards on this. Excellent. So I, I come away very, very impressed with CZ 452, 55 accuracy, no doubt and it probably gets better than I'm representing right here. So what kind of folks buy a CZ 452 and now a 455? Um, I'll stick with it. Guys that love a super, superbly accurate 22. That let me say this, that it's not a dedicated target rifle. This is still a sporting configuration rifle. It's mimicking the lines of a big game rifle, right? And yet it shoots out accurately. I mean, we could transition into like the CMP Kimber 84, is it? The 22 competition iron sighted rifle. Mostly with irons, competition rifle. I shot that in JROTC years and years ago. Or a gun like it. And it, it's just a fabulous rifle. But it's a heavy rifle. It's like, you know, configuration meant for competition. It's going to be whatever it is, 10 and a half pounds, 22. No, this is a field. You could take a field and it's just very very capable and then secondly people who love the heirloom quality let's take a, a really close look at this stock while we jump into a philosophy of use discussion a pride of ownership rifle a collectible rifle something that you can gift to your children your husband <clears throat> hey put this video on your screen hint hint christmas coming up that type of rifle gives a pride of ownership and 
there there are others there where I'm going to hit competitive options. I'm, I'm very fair about that. I don't just, you know, tweet one manufacturer horn. I, I try to be fair to everybody and show you, my subscribers, what's out there and let you make the decisions with your hard-earned money. But to this level, at this price point, and that's a foot stomper, good luck. Because to equal this quality with an American rifle, you're going to go into a Ruger 7722 at about 900 retail. And the CZ 455, 452 is going to be a lot less than that. Yeah, quality. Look at the bluing again. I love good bluing. Is it always the right, you know, the right finish for everything? Absolutely not. You know, if you're talking about a practical rifle, it's going to be hunting in Alaska. See the extremes of weather. Maybe that's not the best finish or the finish on the stock. Because when you have a gun that looks just gorgeous, do you really want to go out and banging it around, which through the years of testing we've done a little bit here look at this there's a you know a ding on the stock right there uh, personally I don't like it I mean when I had my Remington 700 BDL and 30 out 6 and I was growing up I mean when we went hiking elk hunting in the backcountry hiking 10 miles in I'm not joking either I've shown you photos of this I would put my gun in a case to protect it I think it's better to have a synthetic stocked working gun and I said that in the, the Marlin XT22 925 review is, a, I think, a synthetic 22 stock for a user gun. Might be the best. So when we talk about philosophy of use, I'd say collectible gift rifle. It's just really, really cool. And now this 452 right-handed model is collectible. They don't make this one anymore. So you'll probably see them out there on the secondary market. But I'll tell you what, man. It, it would rock if I'd just break down and cry. <laughs> Tears of joy. Don't do it, but if someone someone knows me personally, don't don't give me it. But I'm saying if if I didn't have any guns and I'm being introduced to the sport, wow, what a great rifle. How about a hunting and varmint rifle? I kind of said that already. Well, this is when we need to talk a little bit more heavily on the 455 because you're going to have more caliber options with that gun, uh, namely 17 HMR, which I am a fan of. It shoots with laser beam accuracy out to 100 yards. It's pretty affordable for what it does. And I just love it. It's super lightweight to carry. 17 HMR is a favorite 100 yard varmint cartridge of mine. It is affected by the wind. And as of this summer, we see the emergence of the 17 Winchester Super Magnum at 3,000 feet per second. The, the rounds coming out now are polymer tip. They're 20 grainers, but we're talking two times flatter, two times the energy, and half the drift of 17 HMR. That's a 17 Winchester Super Magnum. We'll have to see if the market accepts and embraces that. And you know what's really going to determine it? Says me. Price. I mean, one reason 17 HMR has taken off is, you know, ammo, firearm again crap notwithstanding, is it was very affordable. And affordability means more guns will be chambered in it and more folks will buy it. Make it available at Walmart and big stores like that. That's when it takes off. We'll see if that other caliber happens. Uh, 455 American, you also have 22 Magnum if you want it. And I think that hits really hard. You know, not quite as laser beam as a 17 HMR, but you have three caliber options with a 455. And again, that combo I showed you in the catalog might be the best option for you because now you have 17 HMR. And what you'll shoot most, I think, is 22 long rifle. There's your caliber right there. And other barrels are available too. See, uh, varmint with threaded muzzle, that's six, 16 inch, 22 long rifle, threaded muzzle, uh, I thought I saw one. Oh, it's varmint with threaded and American with threaded. So di two different barrel profiles and there's some other calipers there. What I was gonna say is I know 22 long rifle lately because of firearm again has been very hard to find. But I hope that changes and it's gonna be a heck of a lot more cheaper to shoot than either of those other, you know, more specialized varmint calibers. Philosophy of use. How about, uh, I did say a collectible, gift, and all that, and then I'll, I kind of been hitting on this already, switch hitter. So you own one gun, I'm talking the 455 here, and you don't want to buy another gun, another caliber, you just have a barrel combo. There you go. You're basically getting multiple guns with one purchase price, kind of. Uh, to be real and accurate in the review, we have to acknowledge the purchase price is going to be higher if you get the combo. Let's see, I wrote it down here. It's going to be like uh, 
four. Uh, I'm sorry, the normal retail price for this would be four twenty-five, about five forty for the combo. And then if you buy the barrels, they're not going to be free. A little bit expensive. And then I don't know if I said it, just a fun rifle. I did talk about you know the the competition factor of it. Which, by the way, we did this when we first got the rifle. For TMPers who have been around a long time, you'll remember the rifle, uh, the drill called Circles of Death. Yeah, do you remember that? That's where I have those little tiny circles drawn and printed out. We go to an indoor range and we shoot those circles under a time drill. Way fun. Go look, look up Circles of Death, nothing fancy in YouTube, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. The 455 went up against the 925 at the time and did quite well. Quite well. Ergonomically speaking, I did find that the bolt will bind on you a little bit if you try to rack it back and pull swiftly on the 452 American. And I talked about that on the video. That's just a little ergonomic jump ahead. I haven't shot the 455. Like I said, CZ says it's smoother. Did it eliminate that problem? Mm, I don't know. Features wise. We've already talked about stock, how much I love it. By the way, that CNC laser milled is what they're saying on that and the checkering on this gun is very sharp i'm not a checkering expert but i sure love it when it looks this good that is a good looking gun now i'm a product of my father and my father taught me years ago to have an appreciation for a classic gun like this i'm talking walnut and steel and this does it for me i do wish it had a butt pad on it that was not hard plastic the Ruger 70, uh, 20, what am I trying to say? The Ruger 7722 has that. That would really set it off. Kind of a maroon colored, very thin butt plate. Just so it doesn't slip on your shoulder. Not for recoil. I mean, none of those calibers are going to recoil. I just put a strip of athletic tape there so that hard plastic isn't slipping around. Sling swivels are here if you need them. Or you can adapt that one to bipod use. Now here you'll find the bottom metal on the CZ452 is not milled, it's still stamped, but the bluing is excellent. Should it be milled? Uh, I would say that would add even more cost and I don't think it's necessary. It just depends what you want out of your rifle. If you're looking for an ultimate collectible, maybe you should go around looking in the secondary market for one of those old fashioned and superb quality bolt action rifles, kind of like the Weatherbees. I think they had milled bottom metal. Still good enough. How about ergonomics? We'll jump into that since we're kind of looking right here at the trigger. I really like the trigger on the 452. It is excellent. Now, it's not a paddle trigger a la Marlin XT22 or the Savage, but it still pulls very crisp and it is adjustable on the 455. I wouldn't change a thing about it. Very nice. The bolt is right there. You can see the length. Bolt knob, no interference with the scope, which incidentally is a cheesy air gun scope. It's just a hawk. We just had it sitting around. We put it on top of the CZ 452, which is sporting an 11 millimeter dovetail, incidentally. I forget the brand of the rings there. I think they're BKL, but I'm not sure. And the scope worked out fine. Does it really match the lines and the type of rifle this is? Uh, probably not. You probably want to put a gloss black on there for a traditional look. But look how low it's coming to the bore axis. And it is adjustable down to low ranges. I'm talking like to 50 feet, which is important if you do like a circles of death drill. You want a, a close focusing air gun style of scope. And there's not a ton of them out there. I have reviewed some. This Hawk scope did just fine. And actually I have no plans of removing it, to be honest with you. I like the looks, it's fine. And it, it's very functional in the little games we will play with this rifle. How about the barrel contour? And once again, this is a hammer forged, hand lapped barrel. I would say it's perfect. If you jump inside the CZ catalog, you'll see various profiles are now available for the 455, included the, including those TB versions. That might be the most preferred to have that 16 inch threaded barrel version if you're running a suppressor off it. If you never intend to get a suppressor, I would just stick with a standard barrel. Mid-weight profile, it's not too heavy to carry around. The gun naked is like 6.5 or 6.7 pounds, I believe. And that's pretty carryable. Love the profile. Again, the bluing is just outstanding. Let's go back to this end of the gun because I forgot a few things. Kind of like the safety. I like it, but don't love it. First, the good. It is very positive, as you can see and hear. That's good. It's rounded. There are no sharp edges. And it's checkered on its face. 
that's good. The bad is I'm just not a huge fan of bolt mounted safeties. Never have been. I'd much rather have it down here, a la Remington 700, some other designs like the Marlin XT22. That's just my preference. I like it. I can deal with bolt mounted safeties just like you can, but given a preference, there you go. I'd rather have it right here. It's just quicker, more intuitive, and it is what it is. It is also just a two position safety. I don't know if that's important to you. I don't really care in a 22 long rifle, meaning that, you know, in the safe position right here, it locks a bolt. You cannot cycle the bolt with it engaged and then off safe where you can fire, right? So keep that in mind. If you're competing against or considering, I should say, a Ruger 7722, that is a three position safety. You can actually have it engaged and cycle the gun at the same time. Not a showstopper for me, but maybe for some dudes it might be. Speaking of the bolt, let's take a look at the extractors, which are rather impressive, I think. This will be your field strip, by the way. Very simple. Safe direction magazine out. I just uh, pull the trigger, release the bolt. There you go. There's your bolt on the 452 American. It'll be the same for the 22 chambered 455 American, as you can see. The reliability in this gun, by the way, was uh, outstanding. I can't remember over the years if we had any failures to eject, failures to ignite. Even with a cheap ammo, that is bulk ammo, which uh, we shoot plenty of here. I'm not going to say we don't, although for the majority of the testing on the 452, we use the good stuff. Yep, I splurged with the good stuff. So I would say reliability and durability on this gun will be top notch from three years of testing in the Nut and Fancy project, and that will take us to uh, <clears throat> firepower. Well, it comes with a five rounder made of steel, and this is a good magazine. It is not, however, a great magazine. I think the award still goes to probably two guns, the Ruger 7722 for just talking bolt guns, the 10 round rotary, that's amazing, still is. Very, you know, reliable. I've been using it for decades. And then also the Marlin 10 round magazine. I said the, that in the review of the Marlin. You can upgrade to this one. No, 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 no. The Polymer 10 round, which is excellent. However, it's not super cheap. Expect to pay around 30 bucks for these direct from czusa.com. That's expensive and it's going to be a downside for the gun. Sorry, it is. I mean, you get a Marlin magazine, 10 rounder for what, freaking 15 bucks? 18 bucks is still about half price. Now, if you go with the combo that we talked about earlier, you can get also 10 rounders for that one. The 17 HMR, those are going to be 36 bucks, and you can get a 10 rounder for the 22 Max. So I would say firepower is on par with this competition, which is to say excellent. If you do run the 10 rounders, you can tell, and you saw from the video that I'm rolling in throughout the video, uh, it will stick out on the bottom. I don't really care, but some guys, you know, think that's a big, big deal. How about accessories? Uh, You've seen most of them. We're talking a scope will be mandatory because this might be a downside to some. It does not come with iron sight. It's meant to have a scope. So you're going to have to do a ring and scope set up, set up right off the bat. Uh, I, again, if you're going to shoot close range, I would do an adjust, adjustable objective scope. The magazines are going to be mandatory. I would have probably at least three, maybe four or five if, you're, if you want the fun not to stop when you're at the range. Just shoot, shoot, shoot. Then have a loading session. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Slings, anything else you could adapt to a Raider 22 rifle. That's about it, you know, as far as accessories go. And then we're going to wrap it up here with value and competitive options. Uh, 425 retail thereabouts nowadays. You can get it street for less uh, if you're lucky. This is not a rifle that you'd walk in on most gun shelves and see sitting there. I still have the impression as I do my rounds with various gun stores that this type of bolt action rifle still sells very well. And by this type, again, I'm talking heirloom quality, really good looking, and at what I think is a value price point. Because if you want to go for an American version, the closest thing I know to it is that Ruger 7722 again, and they're available in various calibers, various versions, as you can see. 6.5 pounds, 20 inch barrel, 10 round magazines, that's gonna retail around 900, maybe more depending on your stock. It's almost twice the price, we hit that previously. A competitive option though, I still love it, love it, love it. It's a Hall of Famer here in TMP, is the Marlin XT22 at six pounds, 22 inch barrel, 10 round magazine, or you can get it in a 17 round tube with 22 long rifle. That is an outstanding, standing gun. I love it, love it, love it. 
The Savage Mark II series, I have a lot of love for. I think its magazine is not quite as good as the Marlins. This trigger, however, is superb. They have that short barrel one that we shot suppressed here in TMP. Lots and lots. Love it. That's only a five pound gun, 21 inch barrel, 10 round magazine. And those magazines are affordable too for the Savage Mark II series. There's some other ones that have come into the country recently. Uh, one is the Zestava. I think KVAR is marketing those. They seem like a high value gun. I'm not super stoked on their, their uh, stock profile. It tapers aggressively towards the front. I'd rather have one that's more sporter in profile like the CZ455 series. I like that better. But I think those are affordable guns that KVAR is bringing in, those Zestavas. Uh, I've shot Zestava 22s before and they're outstanding. Great quality workmanship for the price. And then we have uh, the Browning, the old Browning T-bolts and A-bolts and 22 long rifle. Those are the straight pulls. I think they're not being manufactured anymore, but you can find those on a secondary market. And speaking of secondary market, <laughs> a classic, classic bolt action rifle that I really love is a Remington 512 Sportmaster. Oh, I love that gun. Six pounds, 15 rounds. And we've had one in the project uh, manufactured in May 1948. You talk about a classic shooter, a great shooter. Uh, once it had, it had a minor extraction issue that I had to have Yoda fit, work on, but it's a great gun. Uh, but when you talk about this level of quality, once again, heirloom quality, hammer forged barrel, European walnut stock with cut checkering at basically, let's just call it a 300 and I don't know, $85 price point if you get a good price, maybe 400. Um, good luck, you're not gonna find it. I think CZ actually owns the market. It does. And if you get that combination, dang, you're talking a versatile switch hitter that you can go plink with. And then if you want to go bust some, you know, ground squirrels or something, maybe take out some um, some other pests. I was going to say, I don't want to say, I got to be careful what I said because those guys would go like killing everything. Uh, how about this? Starlings Probably out and uh, rats. Yeah. Or crows for that matter. I say open season on all three of those items. Yeah, that'd be a good gun to take it. To them. And just spending a Saturday, Saturday afternoon at the range, plinking and making, you know, holes like this. That's its own kind of fun, like I've said. Yeah, heirloom quality, superbly accurate. The CZ452. I really couldn't recommend it any high, higher than I am. Uh, there are a couple quirks, like I said, with the safety. It might be minor to you. And the magazine cost, that's about the only downsides I can see on this superb gun. That's a nothing fancy review. Thanks for being part of TMP. See ya.